Thank you. It's uh, very nice to be here. It's an honor to be part of this series again. Gerard, thank you very much. Alex, always good to have here. Hey, Michael, can't see you, but I'm sure you're there and you're making all of this magic possible here. I'm doing the presentation on birds as part of the Honors Symposium at Barton College. So I want to talk to you a few things about uh, what we talk about actually in an intro sociology class because it kind of sets the stage a little bit, I think, for uh, what we're going to be talking about here. And one of the words I want to use is ethnocentrism and introduce you to that. And ethnocentrism is just the tendency for us to believe that our way of thinking or our way of doing things or our interpretation is the correct one. Now that's fine because we grew up with this and so how else would we function if we didn't have sense of what's normal or natural or usual. But the problem comes if we think ours is the only appropriate one and that other individuals' interpretation or their way of looking at it is somehow erroneous. So in sociology, we actually talk about cultural relativism in terms of understanding the world or the perspective from that other person's point of view, and then understand that ours is not the only way of looking at things. You can imagine the world would be a better place if all of us were better at practicing cultural relativism. But ethnocentrism is this tendency to believe that our way is the one that's normal or natural or, if you would, correct. Uh, it's the best, it's like what we should be doing there. I think you can see the current slide here, which is the picture of two individuals looking at the same number from a different point of view. And on the ground is either a six or a nine, depending on where you're standing. This is a perfect example of what we're talking about with cultural relativism. If I'm looking at this, and from my point of view, that's a six, you're a nut if you think that's a nine. There's just no way. You're on that side looking at the same way. There's no way it's other than a nine. So this is a nice example of what we mean by cultural relativism and actually reality being the subjective and not the objective. The objectively, you know, that's just a figure on there. And whether it's a six or a nine is you know, immaterial. But the way I'm viewing it and interpreting it, that's what we've got going on here. Some other examples of that. Uh, and I'm from East Tennessee, uh, Oak Ridge, Tennessee. But different parts of the world, we call like a, uh, a soft drink something different. I personally am a Dr. Pepper person. I should have mine here somewhere. But let me just point this out to you. you know, and you're seeing now, I believe, on the screen, a picture of a Coke and a Mountain Dew. So, which is it? What's the appropriate drink? This is actually homage to one of my uh, former students who is from England. They, she says that they call them all fizzy drinks, which I'm like, wow, what? Anyway, uh, is it a Coke? Is it a Pepsi? Is it a soda? And if you're looking at that, I'm saying, what do you want to drink? And you say, well, give me a Coke. Well, is that Coke? Because coming from East Tennessee, Coke, C-O-K-E, is a generic term for any soft drink. So what are you having? Uh, give me a Coke. What kind of a Coke do you want? Uh, I'm making a Mountain Dew. See, to me, growing up that way, that's the appropriate term. But growing up in another part of the country or part of the world, you'd think, what is wrong with this person? A Coke is a Coke. It's not a generic term. So this is an example, again, of understanding the world from an ethnocentristic point of view, and you don't see it from that person's point of view. There are other examples here. There are a lot of different symbols that are out there. Gerard, are we doing okay? Yeah, yeah, Alex? Yeah. Hey, Michael. It's good to see you here. I'm sorry to interrupt for just a moment, but you know, he's always in the theater. It's just all these awesome things that you do. Way to go, Michael, way to go. So anyway, symbols, what they'll mean to different people in different times. We like to use the Confederate flag as an example of that in terms of is it heritage or hatred, you know, as an example. Uh, gestures, and gestures in different parts of the world. Uh, and something might mean something in one country and something totally different in another. Gerard, we doing okay? How are we doing there, Michael? Yeah? Yeah? All right. Good. So gestures is a good example of that. Language too, I mean the word pitch, there's like at least four different versions of meanings of the word pitch spelled the same way. Is it a baseball pitch? Is it a soccer field? They call that a pitch. Is it a sales pitch? Or is it the pitch of your voice? 
It's probably some more, but you can see how it can get very frustrating, uh, easy to get confused, depending on the language and which version of that word did you really mean. Even something like sign language, American Sign Language and British Sign Language is different. I'm not sure if you knew that. So something you think is normal and consistent may not be. Uh, we're about halfway through this. I'm just going to cross my fingers here that the rest of this presentation goes well too. Hey, Alex, we doing all right? Michael? All right, moving. Now this is a cool photo. but We've got five different things going on here and I'm going to describe them to you. Imagine that you're coming from another country to Wilson, North Carolina, to go to Barton College. So the upper left, that's the White's Tire guy, and he's doing this. And that's over there on the other side of downtown. I don't know if you've driven past this giant statue. We've got uh, Randy Jackson, who was uh, doing this sort of thing. Some of you may or may not know that American Idol in the early days, you had Randy Jackson, you had Simon Cowell, you had Paula Abdul. And Randy Jackson, his signature thing was, ladies and gentlemen, Randy Jackson! And he'd do this sort of thing, okay? And Simon Cowell's over there on the other end, looking at him, smiling, that sort of thing. We have different places that you can go for uh, physical fitness. Planet Fitness is one of them. We have symbols downtown and other places for walk and don't walk, and this is don't walk. And then there's a car dealership actually uh, in the neighboring town here. You see him posting uh, like this, you know, come, come buy a car from me. So these are gestures, and what do they really mean? This is the point. Lecture here is birds. Is it Coke, is it Pepsi, is it soda, is it a fizzy drink? that I've offered you. Did you notice how I'm pointing? Do I know what I'm doing? Was that a subtle way of flipping you off? Or was that just by accident that I happened to be doing this? So, I'm not happy with you. You cut me off in traffic. Something's going on there that I'm not pleased about. Note from this chart here that depending on the culture and the country you're coming from, it's not this, it very well may be that is flipping you off. That is flipping you off. Randy Jackson in his introduction went like this. Simon Cowell from England is watching him flip everybody off and Simon never told him what he was doing. I think that might've been an inside joke that Simon had on, on him. I wished for good luck earlier. That's flipping people off and the sign language potentially flipping people off. This, am I waving to you? Am I acknowledging you? Or am I flipping him off? You see cultural relativism, ethnocentrism. We think our way is the right way. Why are you upset? Why are you offended? Dude, I was just, you know, making sure you're okay. No, you're flipping me off. And think about that car dealership in the neighboring town. I'm from another country. I'm coming in, I'm gonna buy a car. Am I buying a car from somebody who's flipping me off? Am I going to go to Planet Fitness as opposed to one of the other ones? Because they're flipping me off. Dude, really? So understand that birds and the generic term for that in terms of flipping you the bird, it's not necessarily this way the rest of the world. Anyone's a Star Trek fan? Uh, what is it, like this? Yeah and now we find out what it really means in the Vulcan language. So, ladies and gentlemen, I wish you well. Peace out. <laughs>